Good evening. I am in a very confused state. My husband and I dated for two years before we got married five months ago. He is very kind, loving and respectful. And because of this, my parents really like him and were elated when I introduced him to them. We love each other so much and we decided not to engage in premarital sex. Fast forward. We got married and indeed the wedding ceremony was a sight to behold. We got to our hotel room after the ceremony and we couldn't keep our hands off each other. He took off his clothes, started to undress me. Two minutes into it, I realized the excitement on his face had suddenly vanished the moment he slipped off my underwear. I was worried and asked him what was wrong. He told me he preferred a bushy private part on a woman, so he couldn't sleep with me because he won't enjoy it. He further explained that when it comes to sex, bushy private parts are a total turn on for him. I was astounded, immediately feeling as though I had received some bad news. I explained to him that as a woman, I don't feel comfortable with my genitalia bushy. Hmm, this issue has been a bone of contention since that night. I even told him that I'll compromise by leaving some hair when I shave, but he still doesn't want to reason with me. He says I'm being selfish if I can't grow the hair to accommodate his desires. It's been five months and my husband barely speaks to me. We've become mere housemates. Is this really the man I fell in love with? How could he allow this to tear us apart? I'm really sad and I don't know what to do. Ladies, am I asking for too much? And that's our first email. Now, um, I will say ladies first. So I'll come straight to you, Olivia to address this one and then later I'll come in studio to pick a man's mind or a man's thoughts on this particular one. Libby? <laughs> this, is, this is a very interesting one. Hmm. <laughs> Where do I even start? Um, so it's interesting the sort of things that tend to take people on or take them off intimately and um i like the fact that both of you have had a conversation about it and he's been open enough to tell you that this is exactly how he wants you to be um, my only thing is i don't i don't know why you're not talking i guess you're not talking because you don't know you don't want to do what he wants this one it's not like th this is my personal opinion i feel like it's not like he's asking you to I don't know, cut your head off or like uh, cut your hair off or he's asking for too much. I feel like sometimes in relationships it's about compromise. And um, even though you've explained to him and then you've left some hair there, he's also, you know, it, it depends on what you mean when you say you've left some hair. Um, intimacy is very important in every relationship. It's super, super important. And the fact that you guys recently got married and you're not connecting or you're not using the opportunity you have to connect right now and everything is going around in circles because you don't want to um, keep it bushy. He wants it bushy. So what are both of you going to do? Because you both want to eat your cake and still have it. But the more you stay away, the more corrosive the relationship is going to be. And you need that empathy. Love making helps both of you to bond together. This is my take. I hope the, the, the kids are not listening, but I, I, I'm not going to be graphic or anything. This is my take. Um, on, an, on an evening, um, try and, you know, woo him, try and cajole him, try and get the relationship going back on track. Invite him, okay? Invite him, wear your sexy underwear, your nightgown, you know, and then say to him, okay, right now, I am yours and you are mine. This area is supposed to be yours. This is how you want it. Between now and the time that it actually goes to the required standard, you know, length, I really want you. So, you know, um, I want you to come and check out the place and monitor it, depending on how much of hair you want or how much of hair you don't want. At times, invite him to even shave you. You don't know. By the time he starts shaving you, or by the time he starts checking out the place, by the time you realize one thing has led to the other, and you guys are back on your intimacy track. Um, I feel like both of you need to get off your high horses and try and deal with the situation. I can understand that, oh, um, 
because you want to feel clean, you know, you don't want to keep the place bushy, but there are other ways to, you know, you can still have hair, but you know, you can compromise. But the first thing is that you have to get him intimately connected to you so that when you talk, you don't talk plain to you, your <laughs> actions, your movements, he's in sync with you, he's feeling the place. Huh? Invite him, okay, today he can, you know, come and trim the place just the way he wants it. Oh, you know, you have to go around it by your actions. Show him, invite him over down there. What are your terms and conditions? This is your land, sort it out. And you will sort it out. Right now, you're making me speak in parables because I don't know who listens to, to <laughs> us. I, a lot of people listen to us. So, um, yes, invite him and then take it over from there. But you have to get back on your romantic side. Trust me, he hasn't changed. He's still the same man that you met. It's just that I know that, I know for a fact, I mean, I've spoken to a couple of men before, and their thing is that when the place is too dry, it's as though it's a, they're, they're making love to a child, and they don't want that. Okay, and they, they don't want it to be like hey, a collabi or I don't know how they think, but I spoke to a couple of guys and it's like, okay, they want to feel like, oh, they're making love to a woman. So rather than the talking, talking is too much. Show the guy, be sexy, put your A game on and tell him, my dear, please, let's forget about all that has happened, okay? You come and check the place out. You say you want to bushy, okay, I'll work on getting a bushy. I'll be inviting you there very often, as and when, to come and check out the place, and then we can take it from there. But okay. me, for me, the earlier you start getting your A game on, it may be the better. And then for the rest will be history, trust me. Trust hmm. me, the rest will be history. Just try and get the place a bit. And then regarding keeping yourself clean, right, try as much as possible. Don't use, you know, I always go about this. You know, people say all sorts of things today. There's ginger there, there's onion there, there's tomatoes there. They want the place to be chilly. All of that is not necessary. When you are batting, just make sure that you are sweating. Use, make sure your nail, nails are clean so that you don't get any infections or stuff. Wash the place nicely with water. Just water, trust me, that's the trick. Bath morning and afternoon as often as you want. And I think it's also all in your head. But definitely, some compromise has to be made. And meet him halfway. While you are even beginning to meet him halfway, you realize that at some point in time, Charlie, you're going to be married to this man for the next, I don't know, 60, 70 years. At the time, he still continues to eat from the same pot. Tomorrow, you wouldn't even mind whether it's, you know, hairy or not hairy or whatever. But Charlie, enjoy your relationship while you still can. Don't let it go cold. <laughs> okay, some very interesting <laughs> submissions there. Rosina, let me come to you. I mean, is the gentleman asking for too much? After all, he could compromise as well, no? Um, he isn't asking. Well, I don't know. I mean, in a relationship, compromise is expected from two parties, not just from one party. Hmm. And <laughs> um, Olivia mentioned it, that most of the time, the reason why men will not want women to have bushy hair um, to um, to have bushy hair down there is because they don't want to feel as though they're making love to a baby or to somebody mm. who is so young and you know the fact that the place is so clean and so bare just gives them that psychological you know thing that oh this person is probably not mature but you see the thing is that in my in my opinion this is what i think the man is fighting a mental battle you don't know why he's fighting that kind of a mental battle you don't know what has gone into his head. You don't know what he has seen before. You don't know why he's thinking that sleeping with, I don't know. You don't know why he's, he has, he's bent on making sure that because from the submissions, I don't think that he had a problem um, being attracted to her. He truly loved her, wanted to be with her, couldn't wait and went through the whole nine years until he went there. Hmm. So it's probably a psychological battle he's battling with. The lady is also in her mind, she's thinking that, look, as a lady, you need to keep your place clean. And she's probably been schooled and we thought about the period that, okay, as a lady, you need to take your bath X time number of um, X times a day. You need to make sure that you're clean, um, well shaven, um, no sense and all of that. So she's been taught all of that. So as far as she's concerned, she's just preserving herself there properly, first for herself and also for her man. So she also doesn't understand why, look, this is a neat, a neat meal. Just show sure she can eat it. <laughs> but you see, if I were you, the problem with relationships is that when issues come, it's very difficult for both parties to be at a standpoint. The moment you start being at a standpoint, then that's when the problem starts. When she says she likes the bushy, 
he, when he said he liked the bush, bushy, I think that he could have just said, okay, don't worry, I'll grow it for you. The mm. mere fact that you've told him that you grow it for him, even if he's growing small, small prana, you realize that he will probably enjoy it. And once he's enjoyed it before, it will be very difficult for him to say that, oh, I won't go there again because it's like this, it's like that. But sometimes it's the communication. If you start like, no, I can't have it bushy. I'm not comfortable with it being bushy. No, no, this is it. I mean, this is how I was taught, and this is how I've always had it, and I don't feel comfortable. You realize that sometimes, because he can't attach the bush on top of it at the moment. <laughs> so there's nothing you can do at that moment for the bush to be attached. So sometimes just psychologically agreeing with him or making him feel like, okay, well, babes, you know, I want you right now. It's probably a wedding night. I want us to have the best of everything, da 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 da, da. But um, I'll grow it for you. I mean, over time, you know, you probably feel, know that even this is probably even nicer than if it's bushy. Let's give it a try. And then you bring your femininity to bear in the bedroom, OK? Even if that night is even turned off, on another night, you can actually start the whole process and, you know, start wooing him there. He may even forget that that place is not as he wants it to be. And before he remembers, actually, he has already committed and he's enjoying it, and that's it. So I think that in relationships, basically, it's bad for couples to be at a standpoint. Because seriously, I, don't, I can't imagine them going to court with such a reason for a breakup. It would be very funny. That would mm. be an episode for laughter. <laughs> but it is a serious episode because mm. sex, like I keep saying all the time, that when it comes to marriage, sex is a very big deal. When it's good, it might be taken for granted. But if it's bad, it could take away a lot from the relationship. So I think that the earlier they address it, the better. And since she is the one sending the message to the program, I would say that, look, be the bigger person and bend backwards a little bit for your guy, even if not in reality, by communication. Let him feel that you would do it for him. And once he feels that you would consider doing it for him, he might also bend back and consider meeting you halfway. And who knows? At, at, at some point, you might also enjoy your push. Who knows? Mm -hmm. So, hey, okay. I think marriage is all about communication, bending backwards, compromising. And as a woman, sometimes use your femininity to your advantage and get him on your side. All right. Well, let me bring in Sam George. You ladies have said a lot. Um, <laughs> is this even an issue? Like how low or high someone's hair is when it comes to their privates because I heard my sister saying men don't like doing that because it seems like they're making love to babies and I saw you shaking your head in disagreement it's news to me I mean <laughs> <laughs> I mean um, the thought that if you got intimate with your wife and she wasn't hairy down there meant you were making love to a kid. I think it's a psychological thing. Um, and look, people are turned on by all kinds of things. The people who are turned on by ladies who have hairy legs or stuff. I, I mean, the, the, the different things, the complexion of a woman and all of that. So it's clear this gentleman is turned on um, by a lady who has hair down there. Marriage is a long-term journey. Hmm. Marriage is about compromises. Now. If you could stay with a woman in a relationship and go ahead and tie the knot without having premarital sex, right. it means you really did love her very much. Now, to put that lifelong journey in jeopardy over something which for me is not an issue um, raises questions about the real reason for the friction in the marriage because it appears to me that there may be a little more than the guys letting on especially when and i hear the sisters i i i i'm no, I'm no feminist but i believe that women need to have an even kill as men mm. and so my my point here is i hear this lady and i hear her saying look i've compromised she wants to have a clean shave. Right. For her man, she's, a, she's willing to allow some hair. Mm. The man is saying, I don't want some hair, I want all hair. Mm. So compromise means both parties moving their positions. She's moved her position. Right. He's not moving his position. Exactly. Yes, um, and look, I do it at home also. There are times I say, look, I am the man. The rules are not the same, and I want to have my way. Um, have my say and have my way. <laughs> but... There are times on selling issues, you just have to let your woman... It, it's, it actually builds to your masculinity mm. that you're able to accept your woman and make her feel whole in the way she is. Now, you see this lady begin to question her femininity. I hear the lady say, the sisters say, use your femininity. But 
are we flipping the coin and asking her and, and putting ourselves in her shoes where she's asking herself, am I good enough? for my husband mm. and she's not being questioned as to why she's good enough for her husband because she doesn't know how to cook because she's not neat down there but simply because she doesn't have as much hair as he wants i think it's extremely trivial and um i honestly believe that look this is an issue which they should be able to sit down and have a conversation the man should be willing to have some he should shift his position mm. a bit okay and i think that having some hair is a fair point to have Again, one of the sisters made the point that, well, invite him to shave and see if the question is, will he even agree to shave? Hmm. Because he doesn't want no. anything. Uh, yeah. He wants the full thing there. <laughs> so he may not even agree to shave. But bottom line here is if they can have a conversation around this, any marriage, and this is a five month old marriage, a five month old marriage that is struggling with sex is doomed. Hmm. Because anybody who's got married freshly will tell you, well, a lot of sex happens in the first early days, early months. Right. After that, it drops. Mm -hmm. it's, it's natural when kids coming. So if in the time when they are supposed to have themselves and have basically be on top of the moon and do all that they ought to do, they're not doing that. And they're having squabbles over, is the hair much or is it small? Like, I, I'm trying to understand how this could even be an issue. You know, people have issues, but Yeah. <laughs> issues out of nothing. Like, I'm surprised that this has gone on for five months. I mean, look, and, 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 and if you guys love each other as much as you, you tell us, which is evidenced by the fact that you were able to stay celibate until you married each other, that's a huge sacrifice to make. And, and for me, that even raises another question. I'm a Christian, and I believe that the, the marriage bed should stay undefiled, as we're taught in church. But this raises issues of compatibility. Hmm. Even as the church says that we should stay celibate before marriage, there's a need for the church to protect marriages. Hmm. If they had had conversations about what are his fetishes, what are, because this is basically a fetish. It's, 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 it's really not a major thing. But if they had had an open Torah, open Torah conversation on what, what, what turns you on, what's your love language, some of these things could have come up. And they would have understood their compatibility before they went into the union. That's right. Many churches only do the, during the, whatever they call it, the, the you go for the counseling. Mm. They just do the, the test, check if the person is AS or not. People really don't take their time to understand. Look, there are couples who get married, and either the lady turns out to be frigid, or the man's got a machine that just... <laughs> Well, scares the did woman, not anticipate. you know, scares the woman or basically cannot just do anything for her. And I've seen instances where the church has had to annul such marriages because especially when it's not consummated. Right. But we could have avoided all of this. I'm not saying if we had had premarital sex, but if we'd had a frank conversation, mm. the counseling sessions should actually focus a lot more on sexual compatibility because it's key for the survival of any marriage. Right. I agree. Spot on. Um, like I said, I am surprised that this has gone on for five months and it's just a matter of how hairy some... So, okay, <clears throat> what if your wife was not the hairy kind? Absolutely. And there are people like that. They, they may have hair on their heads, but not necessarily have a lot of hair on their privates. What would you do? You know, it just doesn't make sense to me. I feel like, like Sam said, there's something else that's sort of triggering all this. Maybe he has regrets, you know. He found out that this is not the person he wants to be because it does not make sense whatsoever. Anyway, let me bring in some comments. Ernest says, uh, I suspect the man is impotent and is just using the bushy thing as an excuse. Which real man will see food after a long time of fasting and say he's satisfied? <laughs> Chai, the lady should pers persuade him to seek medical attention. Mustafa says, uh, Sister Araba, I'm sure the young man is not asking for a Chimota forest, but probably a neatly mowed lawn, <clears throat> but a Sakura Park deer. Again, I will entreat you to further explain how you feel to him so he can also appreciate why keeping a forest is uncomfortable for you. Naomi says, in fact, we have to reason with the lady small because she told the husband that she will compromise by leaving some hair for him when shaving, when shaving. But the guy said no, meaning um, she's not going to shave for the rest of her life. I think the man is being selfish or else there's something else we don't know about. Tay says, ah, this is not a problem. Just grow some hair for him. It won't kill you, would it? Don't allow common hair 
uh, to make him start cheating. Welcome to the school of marriage. Theresa says, my sister, please grow it for him and keep it clean for peace sake. Why? Be careful this thing doesn't lead to something else. For better, for worse. Remember? Joyce says, oh, he should have informed you in the convos before the wedding day. That at least, uh, that at least would have made you aware of what turns him on. Hmm. This is so sad. But take heart and pray about it too. He will understand you. Oheniwa says, my dear, keep the bushy hair for him. Bath twice a day, keep the hair neat. You can comb it too, if you like. <laughs> you married him. Bible says your body is for him and vice versa. Don't deny him all. When you were taking the vows, did you understand it? Isaac says, everyone is saying great for him, blah, 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 for the sake of peace. How can you grow hair on your private part for the rest of your life, like 20, 30 years plus? The rest of your life. Hey, babe. <laughs> Sophia says, marriage grows stronger and better when and if the couple are ready to sacrifice, compromise, and adjust mutually. These are never achieved without pain. Who is this man who so much wants his comfort without any sacrifice, compromise, adjustments, meeting his wife halfway, such that for five months he will not speak to his wife? I think that he has an issue he's keeping. I can smell something fishy. And finally, Gifty says, please, just come into a compromise with him and leave some for his sake or go for artificial hair and put it on during sex so he can have peace. And those are some of your messages.